said fight back. They said get back. We said fight back. They said get back. We said fight back. They said get back. We said fight 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 back. signed up from uh, the New York Taxi Workers uh, uh, Alliance. Um, and I know that beyond the ones who are signed up, uh, there are several dozen who are still uh, outside the building. Uh, you'll correct me if I'm wrong. Um, apparently, building security um, uh, felt that there were just two, you know, uh, the, the, not felt, but uh, the building, our, our room here is at its limit, and building security um, uh, has held a number of uh, additional people who I gather would wish to testify um, downstairs outside the building. I guess I would just um, uh, assure uh, the members of the Tax Works Alliance who are here uh, that commissioners understand that the people who are speaking um, speak not just on behalf of themselves but on behalf of uh, many, many other drivers who would, uh, would also participate. Um, so uh, with that, um, well, the first uh, person who signed up is Richard Thaler, uh, and the second uh, speaker signed up is Ethan Gerber. This goes to the stuff. And uh, given that there are many speakers signed up, we will uh, limit each speaker to three minutes. Richard Thaler, uh, on the Gateway LLC. Well, it is stated that the proposed rules, quote, change how credit card charges are paid and implement the surcharge payable by a driver couple with a lower lease cap, end quote. The Commission's TPEP rules are in violation of Visa and MasterCard rules for merchants as applied to taxi lease driver independent contractors. The current TPEP rules for merchants would have been valid only until 1979 when the horse hiring switched to independent contractor leasing. Under the Commission's definition of merchant in Chapter 51 and the Taxi Service Rules Chapter 58, the TPEP rules prevent lease drivers from becoming merchants for credit and debit card fare payment. However, these are MasterCard rules referenced below require that is the, quote, bona fide business of the person or entity that is the, set, the seller of products and services to a cardholder customer that must be the merchant. Under the driver's lease, the cardholder passenger is a customer of the driver. The one exception referred to as a sub-merchant in these rules, in the Visa MasterCard rules, does not apply to lease drivers since the driver revenue exceeds the limit for a sub-merchant under MasterCard Visa rules. Then, under MasterCard Visa rules, a lease driver merchant has the right to select their payment gateway and acquire a processor in good standing 
as a member service provider, MSP, of MasterCard and Visa for transacting credit and debit card fare payment. Therefore, all fare payment transaction data and payment card track data presented by passengers to the TPEP vendor's installed card reader hardware must be securely routed by the TPEP vendor at the lease driver's request to the driver's payment gateway for authorization and settlement by the driver's MSP. This is standard payment card industry practice. Therefore, each TPEP vendor must be required under the TPEP rules to install the lease driver's payment gateway API for transaction routing based on the driver's login ID and TLC license number. In meeting their responsibilities under MasterCard Visa rules to the fullest extent possible under the TPEP rules, lease drivers have already begun becoming first data merchants under the appropriate merchant category codes, MCC. Until this TPEP rule violation of MasterCard Visa rules for merchants is corrected, it is estimated that under the current 5% rule, lease drivers are forced to pay an estimated additional surcharge of $100 million annually. It should not come as a surprise that if the TPEP rule for lease driver merchants is not corrected, lease drivers could be seeking compensation. Uh, the next comments pertain to a proposed replacement. I'm not going to recite them because you have the text, but I should say that they uh, propose a replacement to the lease cap. And the purpose of this replacement is so that you have an explicit delineation of the compensation due all parties to the lease, which the lease cap payment cannot achieve. And it's explained in the, uh, in the text, so I don't have to repeat that. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Commissioners. I'm Ethan Gerber from the Greater New York Taxi Association. As the preamble to this rule states, it was brought about because of a stipulation resulting from a lawsuit against the Commission, one of many that have become necessary in recent years to get a good faith hearing. It's a shame that it takes court activity to get our concerns addressed. These proposed rules call for periodic public hearings to review these lease caps, the rate of fare, and the newly proposed credit card processing charge. The concept is encouraging. But the proposed rules should be amended right now to require that the public hearing be a real public hearing by the actual decision makers. The idea of a public hearing is that a decision maker has as much information as possible. A staff report is not a substitute for that. That is, the public hearing must be before a quorum of the commissioners actually present for the entire proceeding. Can you slow down a little That is, sure. Thank you. There have been too many instances where a public hearing takes place where no member of the commission is present, or only one member is present. Sometimes only by an agency staff person is present. Sometimes the hearing is scheduled late on a summer Friday afternoon. A junior level staffer is present. I have been at such hearings where the staffer didn't even take notes. It's pure and simple, a sham, as effective as a lawyer summing up while the jury is on recess. Although the commissioners receive staff reports, it is prepared by someone who probably wrote and is advocating for or against the proposal. It is often heard from commissioners that some or other point was not brought to their attention. It is impossible when they are not present. Instead, voluminous documents are delivered to each of you a few days before a vote. Many of you have conceded, both privately and publicly, that you do not have time to wade through all the materials. These materials often omit key facts. Staff did not tell you, for example, that the taxi, in bio, the taxi of tomorrow violates Administrative Code Section 19-533, which was sponsored by the Chairman and passed by the City Council on December 6, 2006, and signed by Mayor Bloomberg Sorry. Sorry. on December 18, 2006. A letter by Speaker Quinn and Transportation Chairman Vaca against it were delivered a month after it was sent and buried in an avalanche of papers literally delivered hours before the vote. As, present, as presented, public hearings are only window dressing. They should be before full commissions. I believe also there's a drafting flaw in the proposed rule 58-21C1. Um, this, I will, I'll just sum up this rule. This rule basically says that uh, while drivers may be responsible in certain conditions for the damage to the vehicle and they may have to pay for it, um, any insurance money recovered would have to be paid back. Um, that's fine in concept. It's not how deductibles work. As anyone with insurance knows, um, the deductible is usually last to come back or prorated to come back. So in other words, if there's a, let's say, one-third recovery, um, if you and the court finds that the driver was two-thirds responsible. Under these rules, all proceeds would have to go back to the driver, even though the owner ate most of the damages. It should be prorated the same way any other deductible is prorated. 
or it should be returned on a last serve basis, the same way every other deductible is served. That, Mr. Chairman, is under Rule 58-21C1. I understand the intent. The intent is good, but it, it needs to be fixed. These proposals are, are a step in the right direction. The fact that there are so many people, uh, drivers, who are lined up downstairs is a testament to that they agree with us that the, the revenue generated from credit cards is <laughs> going up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we'll agree. Or, they, or, they yeah. Wouldn't, yeah. or they wouldn't be concerned at all. Yeah, right. The credit card use has, has gone up, it continues to go up, and that is why, that is why they're against it, otherwise they wouldn't be. The point of the matter is, the point of the, 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 point of the, the point of the matter is, oh, we talk about creativity, Mr. Um, the point, the point of the matter is, is that credit card use continues to, be, to go up. All this does is, put online what the TLC said it was trying to do when it passed the rules the first time, which was to create a parity and create a situation that will stay the same and lock in a certain rate. If, it, if credit card continues to use the way it's going up, it will not have that parity. That's what these rules intend to create. I suggest, my only suggestion on the, on the rules so far is that first, it's a real public hearing held before actual commissioners, like this one, um, and not one of these Friday afternoons. Not your, 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 Mr. Chairman, haven't done this as much as your predecessor did. I was going to say. Had public hear, we've literally had public hearings on summer Fridays in August at 4.30, designed not to have anyone show up. Um, the commissioners don't know because they weren't there. They, only, only, a, a, only a person from the TLC would be there, usually not even taking notes. We have to have full commission hearings. The other thing is the deductible should be fixed to reflect an actual deductible as a normal insurance practice. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, uh, Commissioners. On behalf of the Committee for Taxi Safety, uh, we believe the proposed regulations regarding lease caps and fare increases both need to be modified to ensure that they are fair for all segments of our industry and to ensure that all stakeholders are protected. We have also submitted written comments that fully address our concerns. It appears that the Commission continues to sanction income disparity between the shift segment of the industry and the rest of the industry. As examples, the proposed regulations uh, one, deduct $10 from all shifts or $120 per week from weeklies and doves. But deduct only $9 per shift for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night shifts, giving the shift segment the dollar per shift increase for each of those three shifts. Uh, two, allows for a late charge of $25 per hour for late payment for a shift segment of the industry, but only a one-time late charge of $25 for the weekly or dove segments of our industry, no matter how late the payment is made. Uh, the disparity in late charges for the different segments of the industry is exacerbated as the proposed regulations give shift segment of the industry the right to charge approximately 18 to 22 percent late charge per hour, depending upon which shift, in comparison to less than 2 percent one-time charge for a late payment of a dub vehicle in the diet. Four, the credit card charges for the weeklies and dub segments of our industry are $120 per week, in comparison to the shift segment of our industry which is $10 per shift, or $140 per week, giving the shift segment of our industry yet another increase of $20 per week more than the rest of the industry. The Commission's proposed regulations that credit card usage for shifts under seven hours should not be counted is arbitrary and will result in an inaccurate review. All driver shifts should be counted, regardless if they are less than nine hours. The proposed regulation also provides that the driver's agreement to pay for damages to the vehicle will remain in effect for only so long as the driver is leasing the medallion from the owner or agent. That regulation needs to be changed to survive termination of the lease if the damage occurred while the driver was leasing the vehicle. Additionally, TLC regulations limit agents to charging for the vehicle for a maximum of three years. Given a choice between purchasing a new car or a used car with perhaps 100,000 miles or more, and that car may have been involved in an accident, what driver would not select a new car if the driver has to pay the same amount of money for both cars? We also believe the TLC is imposing its vision of how the industry should operate by capping weekly charge and the deductible for collision contracts. Because repair contracts are optional, the TLC should not regulate repair costs 
especially if the driver does not believe the value of the services provided are worth the cost. Let the marketplace decide. And finally, the Commission has proposed increasing fines for retaliation against drivers. However, definition of what conduct the violation is uh, in this regulation is unclear and should be better defined, whether drivers or agents. In summary, we believe these rules need to be modified so that all segments of the industry and all stakeholders are protected and protected equally. Thank you. I have one other question. Uh, you mentioned about the late fee dis uh, difference. In your experience, what percent of the Dell drivers do you see um, is, this, is this an issue? Uh, it's an issue at times. And if there is. What percentage, though? I don't have a statistic as far as a percentage, but I know that if you have, you, if you have a bill to pay, um, you need some type of incentive to pay on time. I'm just trying to find out whether this is significant or not. I think the point is that it's unfair. We're saying that there's two sets of rules here, and it should be the same. Okay. Thank you. I understand your point, Mr. I would add that, that the, it's also a really different phenomenon in that with the fleet driver um, brings back the car late, um, that's a problem. That They bring back the car late, and the um, the next driver isn't going to be able to go out. Mm -hmm. In the dump situation, what we're talking about is late payment of their charge, so it's, it's not the same type of harm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.